Hey ladies, today we're gonna to talk about four fails when it comes to getting that flat belly. Mm, I know, here we go. Okay you guys, today we're gonna to talk about possibly why are my abs just not getting flat? What am I possibly doing wrong? So, or even if you do have abs, why are they protruding? It's like, gosh, it's so weird. My diet's on key, I'm kind of doing everything I should, but they still look like they're kind of puffing out a little bit. So here are four things we need to talk about to hopefully get to the bottom of this. Because <laughs> I know it's extremely frustrating and we've all had our major fails. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is number one, doing way too much lower ab training. So a lot of times when they're thinking, um, when people are thinking about training their abs, a lot of the times they're focusing on, well, gosh, it's the lower belly, which number one is the last place to lose fat. Normally we're gonna lean out here first before we get here. So this is kind of the trouble area for most people anyway. So that's where the problem comes in because people are being just like, okay, well, I'm just gonna crank these out. I, every workout, I'm, all I'm gonna do is just, I'm gonna come in and I'm just gonna be doing my hanging leg raises until I can't do them anymore. So you see people in there just cranking these out, you know, rep after rep. Then they're hitting the ground. Okay, now I'm gonna do my lying leg raises. You know, more, more lower ab workout here. Crank this out. Okay, those are great exercises. <laughs> But if that's all you're doing, you're going to overbuild that muscle and that can actually cause the lower ab to start protruding. So it's okay to have those in, but really think about all the aspects of your core, making sure you're doing other things too, you know, your planks, your body weight work, uh, my obliques, my side planks, all of that stuff is really critical too. The next thing we wanna talk about is focusing on quality, not quantity. I see those people in there on the weekends. I call them the weekend warriors. Man, they are just cranking those <laughs> crunches out. They're just firing them off and it's kind of like, okay, slow it down. That's not really kind of the objective of all of this. You really want to think about contracting that transverse abdominus first before you're moving into the exercise. So there's a lot of contracting that needs to happen before you actually go into your reps. Also, how are you breathing? Are you just kind of like holding your breath and at the end you're kind of pushing the air out? That can also cause your, the, your lower uh, abdomen area here to, to protrude. So like I'm saying, if people already have abs, but they're training them in a way that they're kind of making them pooch out by the way they're breathing, that can really be another huge factor. So those are two to look at. Quality over quantity. Slow, concise, contraction first, breathing out as we're contracting at the same time. That's really gonna make a big difference, you guys. The next one a lot of people don't even really think about, tight hip flexors. So they can really affect everything, including your posture. So with that, with the tight hip flexor, height, say that three times fast. With tight hip flexors, it can make your butt stick out and then your belly's gonna come out. I had trouble with that for years because of all my years of uh, track and gymnastics. I had this anterior pelvic tilt and my stomach was really pooched out. I was like, what's going on? You know, I'm pretty lean, I'm an athlete. What's happening? Why do I look so weird? So that can be another thing too, is just making sure that we're, stre we're really stretching out those hip flexors, especially, you know, are you sitting all day? Are you, do you have super long commutes getting back and forth to work? All of that stuff, the more we're sitting all day is allowing those, those hip flexors to become tighter and tighter. So we get up, we hit the gym, we're not stretching them out, and then that's when all the muscle imbalances are gonna happen and everything just kind of goes crazy. So super easy stretch, you can even do at work maybe every half hour, every hour. You're just gonna go into what I call a high split stance with our leg behind us, my heels on the ground. I'm just gonna reach up and then I'm just going to kind of lean away from this back leg here. Since this is the hip flexor I'm stretching, I'm just gonna reach up 
I'm kind of leaning away from it. If you have to do a slight rotation or a twisting away to get that to open up, that's great. But I can really feel all these muscles here getting stretched out. Do that during the workday, do it after you, before you get in the car, after you get in the car, if you've got that long commute, all of that stuff is gonna make such a big difference, you guys, big time. Okay, and last but not least, structural causes. A lot of people don't even think about that. I mean, if you're already having some kind of back pain, you're gonna already find it hard to hold good posture because let's say your, your back hurts. I know <laughs> I have lower back pain and sometimes at night I'm kind of shuffling around the house. <laughs> it's hard for me to hold good posture because I'm, I'm actually in quite a bit of pain sometimes. So that can really be a factor too. Some of us may have issues within our hips. I know um, that if maybe one hip is off, that can throw everything off. So there's, there's already things in our body that may be contributing to a lot of the reasons why we're not able to maybe train properly. Um, so like a lot of rotational exercises can be tougher. That for me is a tough one because once again, I have a lower back injury and my, my spine does not like to rotate. If I try doing it, it's like a couple days, you know, I'm in quite a bit of pain. So that's where we have to realize, you know, what are my limitations? What do I need to work on? Do I need to see a specialist, maybe a chiropractor, somebody who's beyond my expertise? of what I'm doing to kind of help get my body in alignment before I really start training it. So these are some really good things that we need to address. They're all fixable. We don't get like this overnight, you guys. So just really think about a lot of these when it comes to kind of getting those at, you know, kind of getting that flat belly. Okay, I hope these are helpful. Uh, thanks for joining me. Hey, check out athleanxxforwomen.com great stuff on there. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook. They're always putting up great videos of workouts, really good um, different exercises. Maybe you're in a little bit of a plateau. Hit the like button, subscribe. See you guys soon.